keeps you laughing with all the jokes. It's JV. He keeps it real around all your folks. It's JV. You've been looking and what do you know? Congrats, you tapped into the Javon Show. Who keeps you laughing with all the jokes? It's JV. He keeps it real around all your folks. It's JV. No matter the outlook will give you some hope. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Javon Show. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm doing I'm doing amazing, man. Blessed. Me and T over here working, or mainly she working on her, um shipping out a couple more albums today. So oh, I you? thought she was working on the next story for Mafia. That's what I was under the impression. <laughs> I got fired, of. man. I got fired. They blessed you as a <laughs> as crowned as the new <laughs> the new moderator, man. Man, well, first of all, I want to thank you for joining the Javon Show today. But I'm going to ask you the same question I ask everybody when they come on the Javon Show. Who is Courtney D. Big B. Katie? Who is this guy? I'm just a normal person, man. I try not to be idolized. I hate that word, so I don't want anybody to ever call me an idol. I don't want anybody to ever say they're my fan. I'm just a normal person. I have supporters because I support back, vice versa. I'm just you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a person who's just chasing their dreams, not better than anybody else because I believe everybody can do what they want if you put your mind to it, if you apply to it, and if you have a system that believes in yourself. Um, that's all I am, to be honest. Courtney, the D is for uh, it's an anime reference. You know, I'm an anime hat. So... <laughs> The D in all the shows is people who are just great and misunderstood. And that's what I also wanted to stand by that. So that's all I am. You know, I'm nothing more than a knucklehead boy just chasing his dream and who fails a lot and loves failure because that's what makes you great. What did you um, grow up? What was life growing up for Courtney? Uh, it was pretty blessed. I was born in Brooklyn. And uh, it was a pretty rough start, but then we we, grew up, we we moved to Coral Springs, and then my pops got a, a crib in uh, Wellington, Florida. So we was in the suburbs. It was a pretty nice upbringing. Um, inside life was a little hell. Growing up was a little hell. We had a lot of fighting going on, but that made me confrontational, and that confrontation made me uh, always speak my mind, which got me in a lot of trouble. But what's the was the fighting with you and family or the in the parents fighting or what was what type of fighting? All of that. Um there was a lot of family fighting but between each other. Rivalries, um just in general, just confrontation. All of us was hot heads. <laughs> All of us was hot heads. Even my brother, he got kicked out of like four different schools. Um and then he he changed his leaf after going to a military school. Um same with me. I was kind of scared of getting in trouble. My mom put the fear of God in me, so um, <laughs> all my all my dirty work I did where I was never getting in trouble. It was a face and hug, boy. I would rather, you know, face God himself than my mom. So. <laughs> I can't, I can't about your mom. So was she uh, born and raised in Brooklyn? Was she like a, a New York type of chick, and that's kind of where that fire came from? or No. Nah, um, uh, my father came from, both of them was born and raised in Montego Bay. Well, my mom came to America when she was 16. Um, my okay. dad came at, uh, I believe he was 21, when she had his first son. Uh, so both of them had that father. They came in with nothing at all. My dad ended up um, being a manager for Verizon and making a lot of money after that. He served in the armed forces as well, um, 16 years in the military. That's why I got my structure and my, and my you know, Pop, 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 and then my mom, um, she just travel agency at first. Um, then she came here, she was in the corporate world for a little bit, and then she got to Florida in the right time and blew up in the real estate market. And then we right. went from suburbs to the rich life, which that's why I started having a little hatred for money. I saw how it changed family, we started looking at you a little different. Um, my mom always kept us humble, she never really gave us too much. Um, it's hard when you, you look rich, but you aren't rich, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of family would think, oh, you got everything. You really didn't. Um, that's when I started hating money. I started hating when being in a lifestyle where Wellington was like, it's called the village of Wellington. So you started seeing the racism. Um, 
it was just a, a culture shock. I had a real big culture shock in sixth grade. And then that's when I started realizing the difference between New York and um, Brooklyn culture. Because even though I was in Florida, I still, all my friends were still from New York. And I started realizing in sixth grade that they said I had an accent that I didn't know I had. I started fighting a lot because my name was Courtney, you know what I'm saying? So I started being called Corey. That's where the K come in because Courtney was with a C. Corey was with a K. So that's why I had a little differences. Um, then I ended up starting, starting to love Florida. And then um, mm. that's where my lyrical start. Because I grew up on straight New York music. Um, Biggie. Biggie was, yeah, Busted. Biggie's my favorite artist. Uh, Dipset, Cameron, yeah. um, Jada Kiss, D Block. And then that's what shaped K Kid, because I was lyrical and I was straight, just bar heavy. And Lil Wayne, of course, started making me start seeing it a little differently. Um, but then Florida taught me that they also have lyrical, but they have real type of music as well. So my my goal, because at first my first uh, little mini mixtape was called No Hooks. And no, no, it actually was called Sample This Kids, but it was all just bar heavy. And all my friends just from Florida was like, yo, we don't listen to that. We need to make music. So that's why um, at the No Hooks, which was purely a, a, a tape of straight, no hooks, just straight bars. I wanted to be like, you know, I got to, I was like, at that point, I got to grow as an artist. And that's where um, this new album came out, where I was just not so much lyrical heavy, but I could still be lyrical heavy, but also be accepted and make music while still being lyrical heavy. And that's where I learned that from uh, Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City. Because he, even white people was listening to his music, bumping his uh, Good Kid, Mad City. Um, all of his songs in, in a rave, but he still had lyrical content. So that means you got to be good enough to the point where you can be accepted by both. And that's another mm -hmm. level of artistry that I said, I have to learn how to be. I can't be saying, yo, they just don't understand me. I didn't mean, I just got to get better. So that's what kind of developed me growing up. So in sixth grade, is that where you actually started the writing? Was in sixth grade? Uh, eighth grade was when I started the writing. Um, and was it just brother, you were sitting at your desk one day and just had a pen in your hand, or was it something from school and influence? What was that influence? No, nah, my brother was making music first, and then um, I remember I was on the phone with his shorty, and he had came in the room. He was just like, we had a bunk bed. So he came in the room and was like, hey, man, I want you to make music with me. And I was like, what, rap? He was like, yeah, see what, see how are you, or see how you are. So I was like, all right, what's up? So he had a he had a recording um, studio in, the, in my mom's office whenever she left home. He was sneaking in and just start recording. So I got on the track. We did Shook Ones, Mob Deep. And then uh, I was terrible, absolutely terrible. But that's my <laughs> fire, too. I hate being bad at anything. And I always uh -huh. told my, my slogan is, if, if I'm not good at something, give me a week. So I was I was trying hard. And even after a week, I wasn't good. So I just kept crying. And that's when I was writing every day. Back then, I was on a different level, writing every single day in school. Wait a minute, though. Wait a minute. How bad was it? Give us just a little bit of a taste of how bad it was, those first lyrics in eighth grade. I was saying random, terrible lines like, oh, like, like Nicki Minaj just said, I'm a star, sheriff badge, stuff like that. It was just, it was just terrible. <laughs> I was just like, dang. But and then, uh, my, my, my brother had a group called Fly Voice, so he let me in his group. And then he, he, he uh he fired me, man. He fired me. So I was like, your brother right. fired you? Yeah, I wasn't uh, cause my brother was really good, really good, and you know he fought a lot, so he was really well known in Palm Beach. So I was well respected. I had to like come up to that bar, and I wasn't hitting it. So um, at that point, I had no flow. I was just talking pretty much on the mic, and he was already mm -hmm. developed with his flow because he'd been writing since he was a little kid, since he had a little tape recorder in New York. So. I was behind, and after that, I was like, all right, I'll make my own group. So I made my group called, me and my homeboy made a group called Top Notch. Mm -hmm. And that's when the origin of Top Notch started. And then, um. <laughs> Did you do a diss whole... track to your brother for firing you? Uh, nah, nah, I could never. No diss track. Yeah, he would have beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that boy would have beat me up real quick. But, but mm -hmm. um, my, my homeboy was really good. Like as soon as he started, they went really good. So um, 
me and him was just a force. And then we had added another boy, my boy Zach Hayes, which is on the album if y'all copped it. The call the song called Down the Ride. It's my homeboy Zach. White boy with a crazy voice and that boy can spit. Can spit. Uh, he's still making music now. Um I'm happy he gave me the opportunity to collab with him on that song. And then um as well as my other homeboy too. He was in a different group as well. And then he ended up joining us and that was our group for a little bit and then we disbanded. I'm sorry. So uh have you ever thought about getting back with him or anything like anything like that? Uh I always would love to, but everybody wanted to do their own solo move. And um I was always more like group oriented, but I'm not gonna lie, it was actually for the best, you know what I'm saying? Especially with the music industry having splits. That would have been conflict, and you don't make a lot of money in uh, music anyway, so it was for the mm -hmm. best. But we always still cool. I would love to make music with them boys, man. I love them boys. I'm a little all the way to the end, man. To wheels. So what about me though? I mean, like I think that I spit. Um, I'm a decent spitter, you know. Like I can put some rhyme. Um, if I put the, if I did some time, I could do my rhyme and it'd be fine. Mm -hmm. Nah, never mind. Nah, you can. To be honest. If you have, look, listen, if you have a right studio, a right system, you can make anything sound good. If you watch these artists in the studio, you'll be like, what is that? It's the engineers who are, I call them magicians. They make yeah. terrible stuff. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I probably be hey, Javon, I mean, you know what I'm saying? He might be the next best thing. He don't even know it. People in the comments, y'all just so y'all know, I might be that next fire as commanded by Courtney. So y'all better don't don't slip, don't don't be small, soft on my game. You know what I'm saying? That's hey, what, what I miss. What I miss? Oh, you didn't miss nothing. They 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 trying to hate um, on me. So so for you though, you got the the very first project you did. What was your method um, of getting it out there? Were you one of those that just went to every single open mic, that went to every single party, that went to every single DJ, or was it payola? Did you pay to get it on the radio? What was your What was your first album process like? Well, um, not to be too cocky, but I've always kind of been like the popular kid, so it was always just anticipated. Just by yo, I'm making music and people like yo. Like if I drop a song, first song we dropped on MySpace, they was just like yo, we can't wait for the tape, we can't wait. So it was just pretty much just the love that's around me. Even with like this last tape, I've always been blessed where people just pushed for me, and that mm -hmm. made me love my music more because of how hard. Even when I wasn't good, <laughs> people like we, the first song we ever made was called Money Is the Mission. It was terrible. The hook was just. Money is the mission, we won't lose. So, 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 so. Money is the mission. Money, and people will be in school, and all we hear is money is the mission. <laughs> in high school, so that love was just what pushed us on. So, my support was always just natural. I never really paid. I tried to in college, and I realized it never, it was always either fake, nothing came out of it. So, I started not to trust that. So, I didn't know what was good promotions. But when I got to college, yeah, after the first tape, it was just great open mics. I was really, I had really bad anxiety, uh, performance anxiety. People would never what think that. You had performance anxiety? Exactly. I got a really, I'm ambivert. So my introvert side is really strong, really strong. My game probably probably noticed that now where I have to like really include, like when I was in high school or college, I really started doing open mics underneath, sweating, sweating, just hands shaking, like really bad. And it got to the point where um, my fire helped me through it. Still get it a little bit, but my fire helped me through it. Like if I go to open mic, there was times when people just mess up my, my name and just not show me respect. So that was like, what pushed me through. Like, all right, you gotta snap, you gotta show them. So that's what kind of got me through it. But yeah, open mics pushing my name and just being the latest guy, you know, the, the dude, everybody did parties in my, my dorm. So, Naturally, just like, oh, this is for him. They listen to my music and be like, yo, I love it. So that's just how I started blowing up my name. So I blew up my Instagram first and then just purely being that big guy on campus pretty much. When did you know, and first of all, thank you to everybody that's been showing the love with the gifts to both um, Courtney and I, me and Courtney, Courtney and me, 
however you pronounce it in English. Uh, thank everybody for the support and for the love and for sharing the the, uh, the conversation. If you have any questions, put them in the box. I'll make sure we ask any questions that you guys have for this champion right here. Um, when did you- hey, Real quick, up? real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to say also, good morning, everybody. I never say good morning. I love y'all. <laughs> Appreciate everybody who bought the albums. We are going crazy with them. Javon, they said they need a new gold, man. You better put a new one up there because they 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 did that like that. So go ahead and make a new gold. Asking it shall be received. Knocking the door shall be open. Don't don't tell me I need to do a new gold. I will give you a gold. Um, let me see. What is good? What's a good? You know what? Because you're fire. That's the new goal. We're going to do, and we're going to do 19, my birthday year is 1979, and my birthday was July 4th, so we're going to do 1979 fires. Can't Let's say, go baby. ahead and get the goal. Boom. You asked for it. There it is. Fire. And there's, there's a couple names in the album I don't have, so I'm going to post that later on, guys. But if yeah. anybody can help me, and too. For, for my followers, make sure you guys go right now and support Courtney. Um, go and like his page, go and like his stuff. Um, if you're fans of Courtney, like my stuff. I'm great. I'm going to Absolutely. Pretty dope. He's dope. Um, <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you, when did you know that you had actually made it? Like, what was the moment where you were like, wait a minute, I'm actually kind of a big deal? Um... I don't feel like I've ever had that moment yet, to be honest. I always told myself, I feel like I actually made it when my mom brags about me, music-wise. And that's always my top moment. And I, I went to a PT and somebody said, don't ever put your goals in the hands of somebody else. But mm -hmm. she's traditional Jamaican, so as soon as she says, like, yo, my son makes music and I'm proud of it. As soon as I hear that, that's when yeah. I feel like I made it. So I never really had that moment yet. I'm just brick by brick, grinding, grinding. And I'm really hard on myself, so I feel like I could do better. I could do better. I'm trying to be the greatest of all time. That's my goal. Yes, I want to be unanimously, like everybody was saying, Lil Wayne is the greatest of all time. There was nobody questioning that when he was saying, I'm the best rapper alive. So that's my goal. So I never really had that moment yet. Actually, that's crazy that you think that you say that. You trying to get above Biggie or just right at Biggie level? Oh, I can't say that like that. So I'm thinking, I can't say that just, like you that. You just said something. I'm just trying to make sure where you at. <laughs> I can't. Oh, that's no question. No comment. No comment. Okay. But what would without, you say? without it being said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before, I, I want to get to your album, but I have one more question for you. And uh, tell me to mind my business. Tell me about your brother. All right. So he passed away in 2016 in a motorcycle accident. Uh. I kind of seen him like Kobe when Kobe passed away. It's like, it was like, Kobe passed away. You would have thought he would have jumped out and survived somehow. So when he, that's how I see, everybody see my brother like that. So it just really just took me all the way back. So at that point, he passed away. I was kind of had to be the strong person. So it was hard for me to kind of, thank you, Chris, or to kind of absorb that. And, only thing I had was his music. So his slogan is in dreams we trust and all of his music. At that point, I was just getting lyrical, bar heavy, just trying to be good at it. I was making music what was out at that moment anyways, too. And he was making more timeless music. Like Even to this day, his music is still timeless. He featured love. I wish I could show that on some of the songs. It's groovy, it's, it's bar heavy, and he was getting accepted in the industry because of him just being himself. And after he passed away, I was really starting to see that. Um, like I said, he grew up rough at first, but a lot of his fights was him beating up bullies. He always stood up for the smaller person. And, you know, people not going to see that, bro. They're just going to see, yo, he's always getting in trouble. I mean, he was doing mischievous stuff too, but that was always him. That's why he was always well-respected, like I said, in Palm Beach. And then when he started, he was just a man too. His music spread just by being a man too. So, um... When he passed away, all I had was his music. I was depressed, man. I was going through psychosis. I just didn't feel nothing. I was in college at that point. I was studying computer science. I started failing for the first time. So, I mean, when you fail with, when you have a, a passing of a um, sibling, they'll excuse your um your your uh, stuff. But if I was giving me trouble, they were like, 
trying to say he wasn't my brother because we had different last names. Then I had to get a death certificate for my mom. And who, like, how do you go ask your mom who lost their son before them? Like, yo, mom, I need the death certificate of your son. Like, I can't get, it took me forever to ask for that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it was just a lot, yo. So, that's when I was telling you, like, nobody knows. Everybody says it. I always tell people, I, I dropped out with three classes left. Um, three classes left credit-wise to graduate. I still had to do um, electives at 3,000. The classes had to be 3,000 or above. So, they're pretty high-level classes. But I had to do elective first to get to them. Then I would have graduated. But uh, I just wasn't happy, bro. I will go to class. I was going to graduate. Everybody was going to be happy for me. And I was just not going to be happy. And that wasn't what I wanted. I never cared what other people wanted. I never care what other people think about me, as y'all see with my trick or two. I never care. I don't care. I'll be saying whatever comes off my mind. I don't care. And I realized that I didn't want to be on a stage. I watched friends who was having um, post-graduation depression. like, And I felt that was going to be even more for me and i just didn't want that now my brother passed away in february february is my favorite month because that's when my birthday is all of our birthdays are my family pretty much and the last thing he told me i, I came to see him in uh christmas he said you want me to graduate so i still gotta do that for him i told him i'm gonna join a frat i promise i still gonna do that for him too i ain't telling you nothing like that though and uh, <laughs> the third thing he told me was to go into a studio, a real professional studio. And he kept telling me, I'm hard-headed, though. I was like, I don't need that because money-wise, it was too much for me anyways. Thank you, uh, Sonia. So uh, I was at that point, I was engineering all my stuff myself. And the music I was putting out, I would love it. But every time my friends would start playing it and stuff like that, I'd be like, please don't, let, please don't play it in front of me because I was engineering it day in, day out. After party, and people would never even know. I would never sleep in college. I will go to class, stump back, work on my stuff. And then imagine you hear your song every day for four weeks. Mm. Just one part of the song. You don't even want to hear it no more. So he was telling me that, and I just wasn't listening. So months would pass. I was in a state of psychosis where I just wasn't feeling nothing. I was just, I was just terrible. Um, uh, one day, like let's say October, I had like a football game and we had lost it and it just topped me over. I had an argument with my one of my best friends and I was just on the top of the parking garage and I was like, man, this is it. I can't do it no more. And then um, a dude just so happened to be on a parking garage. Uh, I say he's my angel. So before then, I always used to ask God like, why, why, why? And I had a dream in sixth grade that I was performing in front of a, a big crowd. And I have dreams that come true. Um, so that dream, I always thought it was going to be football. I was really good in sports. But I had such terrible luck with football. Skill-wise, I definitely could have made it. But I feel like God was saying, that's not what I want you to do. And I was going against it. Now, when I finally – I'm going I'm to get there eventually, but – I always kept trying to talk to God. I never would get answers. Um, and then that day, I was standing up top. And I was just like, I was numb, bro. I was just like, it's, it's time. And a dude comes. He's just like, yo, 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 what's good? What's good? Let me holler at you real quick before you do anything. So I was in there already bawling. I was just crying. And he's just like, I don't know what made me come to this garage. Um, I really was coming here just for my last smoke. I don't even know why I picked this spot, but I'm going to prison tomorrow for like 20 plus years. And something just told me to come here. So I feel like maybe that was my mission before I go was to talk to you. He's just like, yo, I know life is rough. Sorry, y'all. That's why that uh that picture that my gang picked for my birthday for my uh they gave me a picture. It brought me back to when I finally uh, finally woke up, pretty much. So he was just like, um, don't give up. Long story short, he was just like, yo, you never know what life is about. Yo, it's rough, but there's a lot of people that you can touch. And 
look at how I'm about to touch you. I want you mm. for me to touch more people. So after that, uh, that's when I started. It's either day one or one day. So I went to the studio for the first time after that, a professional studio, to my song Used To, which I performed at uh, Kim's show. And that was the first time that I felt happy. So that was the first time I felt happy. So at that point, I realized, yo, I got to drop out. Uh-huh. So uh, after that, I started making music heavy. And I started pushing. Used to was like my first love heavy song. My bad, bro. No, t- t- take your time, bro. I'm, I'm glad that we're able to, to, to visit this moment because your, your music, had you decided to go through in that moment, we wouldn't be able to experience what we experienced with you. And the comments are, 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 are real to God be the glory. You know, yeah, we, there's nothing but love for you, bro. And we get to experience your gift. We get to experience your brother through you. Um, and this is, this is major for us. You being here is major for us. And, and we appreciate you and we appreciate your life. We appreciate your craft and your skills and your gifts, your abilities, your talents. Um, and we're thankful that you're here. Yeah, and I'm forever grateful, man. I always say like, like God finally taught to me and he finally showed me, like you said, and I, I came show after I was done performing, this lady came and uh, she was kind of crying. She was just like, yeah, I just want to say, yo, I felt all the lyrics that you went through. I felt all your music and it really broke me down because I have empathy and I felt it. And I can't really afford your album, but I really want to say that I want one. And that was so beautiful to me because so many people I put for this album a chance to donate a CD. And because of y'all, I was able to, I was probably going through it anyways, but because of y'all, I was able to give her a CD just off of this love. And I wanted to say, yo, God has blessed me with y'all. Javon, thank you for giving me this opportunity too. It's just so much love is surrounded by me. And because I took that faith and believed in him, he really brought me to that, man. So, yo, And that's a testimony. Bro. That's a testimony for others because there's people that don't know if they want to continue on the path that God has destined for them. And you're living proof that you can stay on that path and have success. So we appreciate you. Um, well, you listen, don't don't be having me up here. You got me <laughs> and, and, and 200 people up in here sharing. So <laughs> now we um, good. I'm, so I'm, I'm about to start story. narrating a mafia story or something <laughs> to get us back laughing. We Somebody's going in a car and in a toilet. Um, tell me about the new album. Tell me about the new album. Oh, wait, wait, let me finish the, uh, so after that, real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, So after that, I dropped out. I was judged by a lot, man. After that, I dropped out. I was still in, on FIU campus. I was staying in the blow of bed with my homeboy. T and all of them was supporting me, too. We were still pushing the music. After that, I went hard, heavy. So I had a um, big story with this dude, another guy sent person. We was just hooping outside at FIU, right? Every day, killing people. So we killed him. He was just like, yo, y'all are the man. He was like, y'all make music? We just started talking about music. My homeboy, Just John, uh, he was a poet. I got him into making music that year. He got me into making spoken word and performing. When this man performed, he had all the girls going crazy, loving him. So at that point, he was like, um, this dude came up. He was like, another guy sent person. He was like, do you understand what you guys, y'all are sitting on? He was like, what you mean? He's like, how many people are coming to school every year? FIU is having like 50,000 every year. He's like, how many people do you have on, on Instagram right now? At that point, I think I only had like 2,000. Um, John, too, he was like, y'all aren't using what you have. And I said, what you mean? He's like, every year, freshmen only, you have 50,000. Y'all aren't getting these people to come at you, and I don't go to college. I have to go find 50,000 people. You have to take advantage of what we don't have. So at that point, we started going performance heavy. I think it was like 2008, 18. And that's where, if y'all, if y'all know me, 
Y'all know that's why I started after every show. We were tapping in like crazy. I was like, follow me at K underscore kid of top notch. And it got so clever. And at that point, we started doing skits. That's when we started making content creation. I had this thing called Regular Day. And it was just like, I had the whole crowd say, Regular Day. Uh, and I was like, I'm effing your mom. And everybody in the crowd was like, it's a regular day. And we just had everybody in the campus loving us. And my, my, that's why my Instagram started blowing up. And then we started having this thing on Snapchat. My Snapchat was blowing up too, called Nearby. So I'm like, everybody go to your Snapchat, turn in your Nearby. And then uh, just follow us. And of course, me and John was like, we was good looking dudes. So, you know, we was, we was hoeing too. So our main support was just uh, women. And at that point, I grew up with very strong black women. So my mom... Strong handed, you know, she, she was running for Congresswoman. Like, I call her my my superhero, like, for real, for real. My, my little sister, you don't play about her. My older sister, don't play about her. They are just, we're just, like I said, we grew up in the house of confrontation, they don't play. So, that was what fueled my love for black women at that point. And I was just like, yo, I want to make music that, cause black women are the, the most disrespected women, people on earth. Like, I know if they say black, people in general, but it's black women on top of that. Like they, the society just tries to make them make less and we just continue to try to push them down. And I'm like, nah, yo, they continue to jump over hurdles and still continue to do what they had to do while raising the family and still being in the industry and being one of the best at it. So I was like, yo, I need to make music that continues to push them. I had pushed back sometimes and be like, yo, you know, there's other women you should celebrate too. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna celebrate my women first. So that started to cultivate my love for all that. And then we just kept going crazy. So that was my, my journey with pushing my brother's music. That's, I know I had to tie it back to that. But that's what started my passion. And my brother lives with me through that. And I'm happy y'all listened to that story. Sorry, you can go ahead now. And like Queen M said, the black women love you back for it. I see. So, Y'all gotta so. tell me. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, gotta pick it back up. Put it in the front of the nuts. So, um, tell me about the new album. What was the inspiration about the album? Um, what led you to the album? Uh, so in college, um, I would always wish I could smoke, but every time I hit the blunt once, I would be done. Fine. And my homeboy always said, "Home girls." Used to be blowing it down, and they used to always be like, "Yo, make a make a tape where we can smoke too, bro. We don't want to listen to uh, Schoolboy Q. We want to listen to you while we smoking." But I couldn't tap into that without being a part of that. So when COVID, the COVID hit, oh, we was doing that. So I started getting my tolerance up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So at that point, I was like, "All right, well, I can start making music." And my first song I made was um, I dropped Spill Personalities in COVID. After that, I was like, "All right, it's time to make." real music. So pretty not only was just introducing each of my aliases. So K Kid, this is K Kid's album. I have three different aliases. Uh, Trey Songs is a, in my R B album or R and B alias. So that's why I was like, all right, let me start that process. So I made first the music was the first one I made because um I had had a fallout with some friends and um the music was just pretty much highlighting that. So I'm loving that a lot of y'all love the music because I always think like the songs where I put my heart into Cause I, you know what I grew up like I said they didn't really like the lyrical stuff so I always think the hardest songs I put the most into people aren't gonna really listen to it but um I started that process of I want to make an album that's good lyric wise but also commercially can be accepted so I was like let me make a smoking album so I listened to Isaiah Rashad had dropped the tape um there's two songs on it I think I just, it's like R and P R I P Young. And there's another song in there that gave me the inspiration for the tape. Um, both of those songs are just like the first song on here, Sativa. Mm -hmm. um, beat wise. So I made the music and I was just like, it's good, but it's not what I want to do with the tape. I want it to be a smoking album and commercially accepted. So I found a beat for Sativa. And I was like, this is it. So I was like, I got to make a song that's perfect. So I be in shower, just freestyling. And then um, I made a cadence to it, put in the voice memo. And then that's what I made um, my first video. I don't know if it's in my pen tweets on um, TikTok, 
but I posted on TikTok, and that was one of my first songs or videos that blew up. And it was just me. Uh, I wrote the verse, and the first verse was going to be like low tempo, so sativa and indica is two different type of uh, weeds, right? So indica is more the slow weed. So the first verse was like low down. So in the middle, the second verse, which is like Chase song, is the more upbeat. So that's like the the um, sativa. And then at the end of the song, if y'all peep, I don't know if y'all peep, but um, I do painting with the high and the low deep voice. And that's like me putting both sativa X indica together. And that's where I also see life. So you can't be too high. You can't be too low. And that's the last mm-hmm. part of the song. I said, you gotta be a balanced. So I posted on, on, on TikTok and I freestyled the hook. I ain't even have the words to it yet. And I even said it on the set. I didn't even have the words to it yet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that. And the song blew up on TikTok. And I was like, this is it. It's time. This is it. <laughs> so I put the words to Sativa. I went to the studio. I was like, I cannot mess this up. It was terrible. The first take, <laughs> the first take was terrible. And I was like, demoral- I wrote it. Nah, I was demoralized. So the reason why I was demoralized because I didn't have faith in my singing yet. Illusions, I made this on Illusions, and I'm happy y'all love it because I still am not content with it. But that was the first time I gained a little confidence with my singing. So it helped me with Sativa to get me in that right place. Plus, I went back, chopped it up. I kept listening to it. I mean, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I went back the next studio time, got it down right. I was so happy. So after that, <clears throat> I started finding more beats. So I found um, the first beat, which was Soup or Sweat. Mm-hmm. I heard it, I was like, yo, this is some Cali music, which is Erica, like your brother said. I was like, yo, this is some prime time Cali, uh, Snoop Dogg, just groovy is what I call the beat. So I was like, I, I gotta go crazy on that. So I was just, so uh, I swagged on that beat. And then um, I had three songs at that point. I was like, I kind of want to um, put more art into my song. Like how you know Sweat and Sativa? was a, a song like that with no, it was like a little gem, nobody would repeat that. So with um, Sweat, I was like, I'm gonna remake the same beat, but since it's groovy, I'm gonna call that like Day. So the first album I ever bought was called Sweat versus Suit with Nelly. And it was two CD album. And the first song was like Sweat, all hype ass music, then the other shit was Suit. So that's where Suit came in. And then that's just the same beat, but it's R&B, sexy, nighttime life. And that's where that song came in. Then <coughs> at that point, I was just like, all right, I got four songs. I'm only going to have an EP, sorry. I'm tired. It's catching up to me. I'm only going to have an EP, so it got to be short. But I feel like something's missing. And then my homeboy, Ja, his favorite song, he hit me up one day, random favorite song was Artist Year. And it was just me venting to. It was just spitting. One of my favorite songs. And he was like, yo, I need something like that. I was like, I got you. So that's where Air Freedom came out. I was like, I got to have one lyrical song on my tape. You feel <laughs> me? It's just, I got to have one shit when I just come out bar heavy. And the first four bars on that was just straight bars. I was like, oh. I started off like, yo, you know I had to have some bars on the tape. Say less. I started off. You know, like, how do I start off this? You know, I should make you spaceship fly. Damn, I wish I remembered it. But if it comes back to me, I got it. So. <laughs> oh, I said, personify my food. You know, my steaks been high, double bar crazy. Um, the shit I smoke make you spaceship glide. My landscape picks. If you wonder why your girl phone flipped, them cold shoulders just turned mine to chipped. I was just like, yo, them four bars went crazy. I had to, I had to put that in the uh, tape. And then I just went and started spitting after that. And you know, I had to tell, I said, the TikTok fan for that boy that was missing. I had to put that in there because, yo, 
y'all accepted me to this family. Shout out to every single one of y'all in here. And shout out to P for putting me on too. Um, that was really the void that I was missing. Like the hardcore ride or die for me. I already had that a little bit with um, my Instagram, but it was more so everybody was doing their own thing. The TikTok fans showed me like, we got lives, we got jobs, but we still gonna make time for you. Anytime you need, uh, that was the difference what I already had. That was the difference, like that hardcore in your face, we rob for him. Yeah. yeah. I'm forever blessed with that. So that was the conclusion of my album. And then on there, I added two future songs that's gonna be on two future albums called 1994, which is gonna be on my first album. Whenever I get signed, my first album is gonna be called Head Knocking Music. And it's gonna be just straight music, just head knocking. And then, hey, I see you, Nikki. And then the second song the is called Rock. So what's the name of the album? Uh, it's called um, Air of Freedom. Air of Freedom, you can get it on uh, Spotify, you can get it on Apple, iTunes, all the DSPs. Yeah. Every single platform is out. Every single platform. And um, I don't know if you can hear that or not. Can you hear that? Yeah. That's sweet, y'all. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Your favorite one. People want to hear you. Um, they want to make sure that you're not computer generated, that you're not born from AI that you're not all uh, 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 auto-tuned. Can you spit just a little bit for the people live so they, they understand that your gift is real? Uh, freestyle? Yes, sir. <laughs> right, or whatever you want to do from the album, to promote the album, whatever you want to do, just show us a little something, something. All right, I'm gonna spit one of my, my, uh, my verses. Kendrick Lamar is the only one I recognize below me. In and out your girl house, contact name is Ginobili. Had to start with bars so these others could feel the tone, but to me only hear dialogue and old mention them, I don't condone. My songs are like a long ride home. After 18 referrals, OSS to the dome. Had three Fs and a couple parent-teacher conferences and two belts in each of your mom's hands. My songs are straight hits. Mm. Reuse this line so you know why. My flow eating the spinach lyric pop eyes. Friends used to skip my songs. <coughs> what was missing? Real supporters show me the math, the vision. <coughs> hold on, hold on, let me run that back, let me run that back, let me run that back. Sorry, y'all, the tears got, my, got me congested right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want y'all to really hear these bars, all right? Kendrick Lamar is the only one I recognize below me. In and out your girl house contact name is Jalomi. Had to start with bars so these others could feel the tone, but to me only hear dial or an old metronome. I don't condone. My songs are like a long ride home. After 18 referrals, OSS to the dome. At three Fs, and a couple of parent-teacher conferences and two belts in each of your mom's hands. My songs are straight hits, uh. Reuse this line so you know why. My flow eating the spinach, lyric pop eyes. Friends used to skip my songs, what was missing? Real supporters show me the math, the vision. You can get decked in the face with no hearts. Join the spade, ace of spade with no cards. Me and Mama Duke still beefing. Three classes to graduate, but temporary dropping out for this reason. Career goals is to be the greatest to be. Career goals is to be the greatest to be the greatest that you ever heard. <laughs> My bad. Career goals is to be the greatest you ever heard. And that's including Braille, so the plumber took the purge. You can get decked in the face with no heart, straight spade, straight hands, no spade for Jack. Get the cards. Rest in peace, Chris. I'm still pushing the mission. Assassinate my creed, but faith in the eco vision. Uh, I'm a motherfucking reverend on this mic, nigga. I can sell the cake. I can't say that no more. To the tight nigga. I can sell Tyson chicken, the freaking mic, nigga. And turn the box of a vegan the next night, nigga. Fuck any dentists that say I need braces. My teeth can run the fucking game like a crib with A6. 5 6 Ace, nigga. 8 0 9. And I bet your chick know the rest of that line. Bars. 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 <laughs> Bars. Yes, Bars. sir. Y'all, if that's going to be on my double XL freestyle, y'all. That's I put that for the future. Let y'all know that. And I'm going to be featured on that one, too. If y'all have not gotten this album yet, y'all need to today. And yes, I am pointing a finger. Y'all need to today go on whatever platform is your preference and go pick up the album 
And then I need y'all immediately to make a run to go and love and share his material, his Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Make sure y'all go on all of his platforms right now and follow this man. Now, before you go, before you go, you mentioned Biggie. Um, I am a Biggie fan. I've got Biggie number one. I've got Tupac two. I've got Eminem three. And I get a lot of grief. Who are your top five? Biggie. Lil Wayne, J. Cole. Mm -mm -mm. I put my brother up there, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Damn. I would say Smino, that's a favorite though. I gotta go Kendrick. I gotta go Kendrick. Is M even in your top 10? No, absolutely not. Absolutely Interview not. over. Um, <laughs> that's, I love before, Tupac, but I, no disrespect. I understand, I I understand Tupac, what you're saying. A lot of his biggest songs, uh, he probably still wrote it, but a lot of his biggest songs have singing features. So that's why I take him a little bit out of my top five. If y'all really think about it, a lot of his biggest songs have a feature from somebody singing. Um, but he's incredible. I will say that. Um, but that's why I don't have him in my top five. That's cool. That's cool. Before you go, we got introduced to each other by um, Casey Moore from Lavender Life. Um, she's one of the greatest people of all time. Love her forever and ever and always. So I wanted to bring her on real quick to say hello. I know that y'all just spent time with each other a little bit ago, but Kim, say hi to my guy, Courtney. Hey, Courtney. What up, Miss Kim? What's up, Bo? How you doing? You know, I'm always rocking. I'm always good. How about you? Um, um, I'll be better. I'm all stumped up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all stumped up. I but wanted to. The no, whole time I got you sick. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was all You're Kim's fault. I like to blame Kim for everything. He does. He blames me for everything. So, just oh, like Lord. you know, you you always waiting on me when I'm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're about to get up out of here. We only got about four minutes left, but you've got some major supporters who've been in this box just loving and wanting to show you love. So we're not going to hold Courtney too long, but that lovely lady, how do you feel about Courtney uh, D. Bigby? Hey, the kid. I mean, Courtney, no. I rock for him. I roll with him. I, that's my dude. He rocking, I'm rolling. We we together. We locked in. Four flats on the Cadillac. He can call me. It's whatever. The That's music right. fire. I had it playing in the barbershop. They put it on the TV yesterday. Like the whole barbershop was rocking to court yesterday and they thanked me for the put on. So I mean, yeah. Good music, That's good people. Up. Yeah, it's right, court, court. I appreciate Bling Queen, how do you feel about um that guy right there? That guy knows very well how I feel about him and we about to no, tell thanks. everybody else. Love him like cook food. Period. And she loves her friends. I love him. I love his work ethic. Okay. Yes. His talent. He already knows this is not my genre. And I've been bumping this bitch for the last three, four days like crazy. And it's not my genre. I'm a straight aura and B girl. Everybody know that? Yeah. But not when it comes to this CD. Not at all. Mm. I don't even have a CD and I'm getting two copies. <laughs> Doesn't even have don't a have CD. One. Don't matter. And she's getting two copies Don't because matter. that's how fire it is. Exactly. Or, and we bought the two copies <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Sure did. It didn't matter. And you I'm not giving it to it nobody. I'm keeping my second copy. Nah, y'all better let me buy it. Uh, yeah, yeah, we see, still have um, issues with you know, that, Courtney. But thank you, you know. Kim. I thought I was the only one. Nah, <laughs> but but about, see, let me say, your black ass is sitting up at the Grammys, I'm going to have mine. Thank like, you. I got All the right. Simon, what y'all just got. Mm -mm. Wait, before we go, Sorry, I got to say one yeah, thing. Grammys is going to, I'm speaking this into fruition. We talking Grammys and all that. So when you rolling up on the carpet and whatnot, well, first of all, my gang going to be with you, but that's not the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have mine. Look, let I'm me say this mine. real quick. Mm -hmm. For the people who got two copies, one is signed, right? Good morning. One is signed. I will be buying it back in the future because technically you are investing into my art. Mm. I will have a wall for my first album and my second album that I just did where I buy back these and I'll put up so I can see 
who supported me in the beginning. And I will never forget you. That's what I want to do. With. I want you guys to be a part of me everywhere I go. Not just on social media, at my crib. So every time somebody come, I'm like, look at these names. This is undeniable here. I want you guys to sign it back at that point, And I'm going to buy it back from you as a thank you. Wow. I'm going to pray about it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to get a third said, CD. We're going to pray about it. I'm gonna pray about. It. I might get a third CD. I mean, he did yeah. sign the the poster. See, I'm, so. I'm I'm like, yeah. I tell you what, bro. I'm gonna go in and buy a third one. You can sign the third one because the one you said, the one that's in the mail to me now. Yeah, I got my notice. It's in the mail to me now. Yeah, me no, too. I, I got my notice too. Bro. Thank you for that. Mm -mm. Thank you, boo. I got my notice. It's in the mail and number boo. Um, so I tell you what you can do. Um, we talked about. You know, maybe that other poster, because this one is nice, but you know that, that other one that kind of reminds nah, yeah. me of who I'm, I I'm am, gonna I'm going to need you to do that one. I'm going to drop that today. I got you. And, excellent. And then you can sign that. And then I'll buy another CD, and you can sign that one. And I'm going to let you buy that one back. But the one that I got, the one, the first one, no, boo. No. <laughs> that's mine. The, that's the mine. Buy, I'll buy so Grammys. One. And all that other stuff, and I can say, because see, already people are like, wait a minute, you know her? It's only going to be a minute before it's, wait a minute, you know him? That uh -huh. part. What you uh -huh. mean, man? You know it's going to be a minute for people like, so you know Courtney? Minute. Yes, sir. I, yes, ma'am, I do. If they That's know me, dude. they know y'all. I do know Courtney. Ain't got the CD to prove it. Um, hey, Nika girl, what do you know about with, Courtney? With let me tell you, as great as the artist is, and I mean the artist is phenomenal. And just like Mr. Mahalo, I am not so much a rap person. Oh, but when I tell you, this boy's lyrical content, it makes me proud to be able to say, hey, I know this artist, not a rapper, this artist that you need to listen to. And I can say that with all my body and soul and no, I'm not going to get embarrassed. That part. When I hear mm. that music, that I believe part. in it with everything in me because I know it is amazing music. So <coughs> I know I'm not going to get clowned when I recommend this to somebody. Yeah. You know, you'll know somebody that does music, <coughs> but that music really ain't, it ain't really music like that. And so you ain't just to tell nobody, oh, go cop this album. Hey, I need you to listen to this. Yeah. Everywhere I go, hey, I need you to listen to this. So yeah. as phenomenal as the artist is, the man is even better. And that's why wow. the day I die to my last breath, I will always, always support. I will always have this back. It's, it's, a, it's a stand at this point. It's not a fan. I'm a stand. <laughs> okay, I was, I was at that. I love you, man. Let me go to Miss Reese. Miss Reese, <laughs> you're on the live with us real quick tell us what you thought about courtney b big so court hi guys first let me say hi because i've been in my a on the tiktok grill so let Wait. me say hey to my people <laughs> hey t pause pause t hey, before t. you start hold on one second hold on okay second reason turn that turn that video on and show them what we've been working on this is why uh -oh. i look crazy it thirty dollars y'all because Miss Reese, he, the man camera. asked for you to put come on. Flip the, flip the hey, yo. Okay, so I am literally in the process of everybody's slave. order right now. So, wow. Yeah, Every I'm working. Is personalized. Get, get it, it Has a personalized thank you letter. They have been working, y'all. We have been working thank like you team. crazy. Of crazy. course, guys. But I really just wanted to come up here and basic like being court's best friend i've seen the, not the very beginning of the journey but when i did come into the journey it was like everybody was on the same type of grind like everybody was working everybody was grinding regardless of it was sports music poetry like whatever everybody got the same support so to see like his vision come to life like that makes me happy i don't think i told him that i was crying last night because i had his second album in my hand like that alone like I'm proud of it. Like y'all don't know the type of stuff that we went through, but we've been through some stuff. Nah, fuck, <laughs> so to like see this, to be able to help him with this, like I'm praying over y'all orders. Like I pray over him constantly. Like it's 
so much love behind what he does. Amen. Um, and I just, I'm grateful to be able to be here to see him be happy and to say that because he don't been through hell. He don't told y'all some of the hell that he been through. So like, just to see that y'all support him, regardless of what he's been through, regardless of if y'all don't like him about what he say, because he is going to say whatever come to his head. <laughs> but like, the love is always real. So like, I want to say thank you for loving on him the way that y'all do. And keep supporting him because he is great. And this is only the beginning, really. So, yeah, I'm going to go by. Very in the beginning. Very in the beginning. Thank you, Riz. Um, Miss Erica, <laughs> tell us about Courtney. Big, big. Good morning. Hey, y'all. Hey. So the one thing I want to say is, Court, I'm super, super, super proud of you. And I'm so happy that this album is finally hitting the streets. And the one thing I love about Court is that discipline. I'm a girl of discipline and Court was so disciplined and ready to put this album out. And he had so much focus. And that is what um, we stand behind when we say we ten toes down is that grind. So super proud of you, love. This album is awesome. I'm bumping it every day since to get dressed in the morning. So <laughs> push it and we right there behind you. All right, thank you. So we had to get you just a little bit emotional. We had to make sure you blush just a little bit today, Courtney, because people are loving the album. They're loving the music. They're loving the person. <laughs> and that's all a testament to your family, to um, your brother, and to your work ethic, like they said, to your grind. So we appreciate you. We love you. I appreciate you coming on the Javon Show. Uh, let me chop it up with you a little bit. Appreciate Kim for introducing me to you. And, and let me say this, Jay. People. Let me say this, Jay. Um, I just for Courtney and Lady T and Miss Mala and Ika and everybody and Erica and P and everything for P to have introduced all of us and for this to become what it has become. I know it's God sent, it's God blessed is God everything and I'm yeah. grateful and I'm just I pray that he leads us where it's supposed to go and so I'm just grateful Courtney thank you for letting me be a part of your world that's all uh, I should be the one saying thank you <laughs> yeah. I'm grateful to whoever took the Black and Mouse out of Casey Moore's hands this weekend. Because <laughs> like, he has been fully committed to no filter. Um, get the wood tips next time, Kim. Get the wood tip. You know, on behalf <laughs> of every not with you, Jay. It's not with Hold you. Hold on. I'm going to do like Courtney be doing this whole interview so far. Let me show. Oh, my God. Courtney ain't going to be the only one showing his chest. Oh, interview. I know that. <laughs> Um, Courtney. Oh my God! Another one with abs as a shirt. Lord, no, oh Jesus. Courtney, tell us That's about Courtney's your social media handles. Fame. How can they find you? How can they find you? Y'all already know the y'all already know the song, man. Y'all go follow me at every single social media platform. I made sure all of it is the same, so I'm easy to be found. You can follow me at K underscore K of Top Notch. Ask your mom about K underscore K. Of top notch, your auntie, you know about K underscore K of top notch. That's where he is. That's where y'all go follow him. I'm Javon Show. <laughs> follow me at Javon Show. And to everybody that watched, everybody that participated, the 31,000 likes, and to my kids sleeping in the other room, thank all of y'all for tuning in today. I appreciate y'all. God bless you, and we'll see y'all later. All right, thank you for having me. Who keeps you laughing with all the jokes? It's JV. Who keeps it real around all your folks? It's JV. You've been looking and what do you know? Congrats, you tapped into the Javon Show. Who keeps you laughing with all the jokes? It's JV. Who keeps it real around all your folks? It's JV. No matter the outlook will give you some hope. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Javon Show.